Make did you know camera, we're gonna do a, a fit making juice and filming these apples and all in one. We've had a really great apple harvest this year. The majority of the apples are now in storage in Lucinda's playhouse, much to her disdain, but there are still the grannies that is here on this tree and now that the leaves are beginning to fall you can really see how many apples are on this tree. I'm going to leave those for another couple of weeks because they actually hang really well and are the last apples that I'll pick. With so many apples I'm always looking for things to do with them apart from of course eat them fresh. We will of course bottle some as we have in the past and also dry some as we begin to use fires over the winter more. But this year I thought I'd experiment with another utilisation of apples. My main goal is always to create a product that we actually use. Now one of the apple products that we do use is apple cider vinegar. And we don't use a lot, probably only 10 to 12 litres in the year. But I thought I'd have a go at making it myself. I've never done this before, so it's really experimental. And of course, I did a little bit of research on YouTube. Where else? I noticed that there were a couple of methods being used on YouTube. One of them involved using sugar, water, and just cutting up apples in it. I really didn't think this was the true and accurate method of creating apple cider vinegar. It's maybe an apple flavoured vinegar, but not really the proper thing. The proper method has two stages. The first of making an alcoholic apple cider, the second of actually converting that alcohol into vinegar. So the first step, of course, is to juice the apples. Now, the very last of the mutsus is what I'm going to use today to create some juice. The ideal method to create this juice, of course, would probably be a cider press but I don't have that. So what I'm going to use is our champion juicer. One of the problems though with the champion juicer is it does create quite a large degree of froth on the apple juice. So I'll have to let this stand for a short time before taking the froth off and then putting it into the flagons that I'm going to actually ferment it in. Now once the froth is removed, I'm going to put it in these couple of flagons to ferment. Now I have sterilised these previously. Look, there are probably other, um, probably better things to ferment in, and I'm dribbling it everywhere. It's all messy process, quite a bit of cleaning up to do afterwards. But these I flagons I had, and it was a, just a simple process to grab them. Might fall from the big jug, I think it'll be better. I'm leaving a little bit of space here, not only with the froth coming up, just so that it's not going to come up quickly and, and block the uh, airlocks. Try this big one. I think I've got too much juice here for these two flagons, but it won't go astray. Well, there's enough juice left over for a good drink, which will be appreciated now. But first with these, now that I've got the juice in, I'm going to add some yeast to it. Now the yeast that I'm using is a wine yeast and Look, I'm going to put about a teaspoon in each bottle, which is probably more than necessary, but it's the easiest way to measure it. Not a big teaspoon, just a little like this. Now, there are natural yeasts on the apple, of course, but just as there are on grapes. But adding yeast like this means that you're going to have a predictable result now the second uh, element here that's important is to actually seal these and to use 
a airlock, a fermenting airlock. So I'm using a silicon bung in the top and I need to put some water in this. Basically with this type of airlock you fill them around about half full and that means that it will bubble through when the yeast is producing the carbon dioxide and as it comes up it will push out all the oxygen and bubble out all that carbon dioxide pressure. But before I put this in I do need to mix that yeast in so I'm just going to put a cap onto the bottle and give it a good shake. That'll mix the yeast through. So I'm going to push that down really tight is what's important. Now, see it's popping back out so you need it to be dry enough so it doesn't pop back out. It's a real problem if it pops back out. I think I might have to look for better containers than these. seems to be holding. So now I just simply do the same to the other. Once I've done that I'm going to set these aside to let them ferment and we'll come back and revisit them in a few days and see what's happening. So it's three days now that this apple juice has been fermenting and you can see a lot of activity going on here in both bottles and when you come up to the airlocks you can really see how much it's bubbling away this second one the froth has gotten up into the airlock a bit and so it's really foaming at the top because of that it's really pushing heaps of carbon dioxide out very very active they'll probably need to ferment for about a week uh, to eight days or so total but we'll just keep watching it once this bubbling uh, basically stops it's the indication that the alcohol level has reached maximum so we'll come back and check it in a few more days it's now a week since I put this apple juice down to ferment and you can see now that the fermentation has basically come to an end there's no more bubbling going on. It stopped probably a couple of days ago and the juice itself you see has begun to clarify there's very little bubbling going on there. So I think it's time to take this and to take it to the second stage uh, to, in the vinegar making process. So I'm going to decant this fermented juice now into these open mouth jars so that it can go to the aerobic um, acetobacter stage of the process. You can see at this point how there's still pressure holding in here uh, because it's holding the liquid in the airlock in the second chamber. So when we pop this off that should drop right back and it's now evened up as the pressure is released. So I've got a, a fine mesh over here to strain it and I'm pouring it trying not to get the yeast sediment at the bottom coming through. So I'm just pouring it off slowly. I want to get as little of that yeast from the basin as I possibly can but there's always going to be a little bit come in. Probably about that point I'm going to stop, leave that sediment there and these are a little bit not the ideal size. I can't quite fit the other one in here but it's just what I have. I'm going to uh, taste this and see what it's tasting like at this stage. <laughs> It's a very mild apple cider, slight alcohol flavour to it, but yeah, a very mild cider. This juice was all pretty much from one apple, which is the uh, 
the Mutsu apples and of course every apple is going to be different. It wouldn't be an exciting uh, cider to drink this one really. So I'll put the second one in the second bottle the same since it's not going to fit in that first bottle. And swap that over. One again. Pop him off. The, see how that which was dark all the way up here is now equalised as the pressure has come off it. And again we'll pour it in. We should stop there. It seems a waste I know to th throw that away, put it on the compost, but it's not really going to be good into here. Okay, so at this stage, what I'm going to introduce to it now is some mother. Now, this is a locally made apple cider vinegar that is unpasteurized and has a mother in it, which is acetobacter, basically. Before I do that, I should give it a shake to get the sediment mixed into it. And I'm going to add probably half a cup to each of those. That's probably more than necessary, but just to introduce. Just introducing the Acetobacter and getting the process of vinegar started. I mean, it would happen naturally with time anyway, but this puts a good strain into it. And I'll give it a little bit of a stir just to get that well mixed through it. It's not going to get much mixing apart from this. And now I've got a couple of pieces of cloth just to go over the top to keep the dust out. It'll still allow some oxygen flow to come in. So these will sit now for a, quite a few weeks for that process to occur. I started some earlier and this was my first lot and it's now been sitting for two weeks at this stage of the process and we'll have a little taste. You can actually see on top now there's beginning to be a little bit of floating material so what's it like? Getting quite acidy. Um, there is still a hint of the alcohol in there though. This was quite a strongly alcoholic uh, cider when I made it because I did make this one with a mix of apples, which I think was the better choice than the single apple. But this is ahead in the process by two weeks. You can see how the color has changed over that time as it's clarified. That is certainly on its way to making vinegar. So still a few weeks to go on it. We'll come back and revisit it later and see how it's going. But that's the uh, the process to this stage. And it's, look, it's been a fairly simple process. I'd encourage anyone to have a go at it that's got plenty of apples.